We are rocking and rolling on the SkyMaster 1 5th scale F16. Last video we finished up with getting the engine installed in the aircraft and we are ready to start with the back end and continue working our way forward in the engine compartment. We're going to start off with our afterburner light exhaust cone setup and then we're going to move into the engine installation. Okay, so during one of our first videos we took our pipe support here and we uh, took the pipe, the new pipe, and traced out a template. So the point of doing this was I knew that we would have to uh, adjust the size of our pipe support. So we've got that here now. I'm just going to get that centered, take a pencil and uh, mark that guy out. This ultimately is what supports the back end of the pipe. And then what will also happen here is our afterburner lights will get mounted to the pipe support as well. And those simply just plug into our connectors that we installed previously. All right, so we've got our, uh, our pipe mount all sanded out. Just used a Dremel and sanded that guy out so that fits perfectly. And uh, what we need to do now is get our afterburner light mounted. So this is uh, pretty straightforward. So the way these guys are constructed is there's some white uh, glue material. I'm not sure what it is, but that holds the ring onto the cooling fins, which or, or probes, I guess maybe we'll call them. But uh, anyways, what I'll do in this case is I will use a little bit of CA and tack this in place. And then when we're ready to mount it, I'll just go in with, with high saw and just put high saw kind of all the way around this ring, just in, in certain ones. And uh, that'll keep this nice and mounted. And the thing about the tail section of this plane is the exhaust cone comes down or the turkey feathers come down. There's, there's just kind of a little gap all the way around. So um, we need that whole entire area to really glow. And to help with that, with the turkey feathers, what you can do as well is you can paint the inside white. And that helps obviously the light to really just shine off everything, shine off the pipe. And uh, it's a pretty cool effect. Now this piece here is designed to go inside like this. So if we use this, there's just a little gap around that pipe. So here's an example of what it's going to look like. So like that, and uh, you'll see the orange glowing around this area. So um, it'd be cool if we left this thing off because then it would be even more visible. So we'll see how it looks when we put this all together, but this is kind of an important piece for the scale look of the plane as well. So, all right, so there's the tail cone just set in place. So I ended up putting the inner piece in, just spot gluing it with CA. Now that inner piece was about a half inch, a uh, centimeter longer than it was. So I actually sanded that down. It's a bit of a compromise. I, I would have rather left this off, but then it would look funny. So what I did was obviously get rid of more distance. Now the point of that is as this extends further, it closes off the cone and I wanted to keep a nice open area around the exhaust pipe so you'd see that afterburner light really glowing. So now that I've got this figured out, I'm gonna take this apart. We're going to glue this uh, in place permanently and then we'll be painting the inside of the tail cone with our BVM ceramic paint, which is bright white. All right, so we've put three coats of BVM heat shield on this guy, and that's gonna be awesome for protection number one, but also reflecting the, uh, the afterburner light in there. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to probably just paint this area black, I think, because this is visible from the back end. The pipe is a little bit inset and I don't want this white line to be showing. So at the very minimum, I'm going to paint the, uh, the tips here black. I may go in a little bit. We'll have to see. I'm not 100% sure on that yet. So we're gonna put uh, some glue, some high sol around our afterburner light. We're gonna put a little bit of goop on our connectors for the afterburner light where they plug in. They're just on a servo connector. And once that's done, we are ready to install our tail cone. All right, Nez is keeping our wing warm. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we've got our tail cone turkey feathers installed. Looks really good. Um, now that this is on, I'm probably just going to paint that little ridge black. Leave this part white because that'll, that white will absolutely glow when the orange uh, afterburner turns on. So I'm happy with that. Uh, what I do in this, this is all keyhole. So what I do is I back those screws off 
get the tail cone installed, keyhole it, and then I have a long Allen key that I tuck in between the pipe and the turkey feathers and do those guys up so it's nice and snug and uh, it's not gonna pop off, so. All right, so we deserve to see this afterburner light uh, powered up, so we got some battery juice connected to the, uh, the circuit there and uh, let's give some throttle up and see what it looks like. Oh, baby. <laughs> Camera never does it justice, but that looks so cool. Wow, I actually like the effect of the light coming through the cone or the turkey feathers as well. That is so nice. If we didn't paint three layers of uh, heat shield on there, that would be even brighter. That is awesome. That turned out exactly how I wanted it to and expected it to, looks great. All right, I'd like to take a minute and share with you today's video sponsor, and that is Creality. Creality reached out to me, and full disclosure, they sent me one of these printers. Uh, this is the K1 Max. They also sent me the Ender 3 V3 KE printer as well. We haven't opened that one up yet. Really excited to try out the K1 Max. Now, Creality, very, very popular name in the 3D printer world. We have had the opportunity to try printers from a few different manufacturers, and this one was tons of fun. First thing we printed was a pair of shelf brackets. Now, I don't know if this is a faux pas, but those shelf brackets were for my AMS unit from my bamboo on the end to get that out of the way. And didn't even print a Benchy first, but that was the very first thing we printed with the Creality white rapid PLA and it printed beautifully. No settings to adjust, it just worked amazingly well. After we did the shelf brackets, then we printed the Benchy and it printed phenomenal. It was a great product and uh, produced a great result. Uh, the little lip on the bottom is the, uh, the adhesion brim, but very impressive on the Benchy and it was insanely fast. Printed the test cube as well too. Now the test cube has a bunch of complicated things to print on it and that printed amazing and then after the test cube we knocked off eight of our uh, our prints which we use for production so this production item is a gs 200 flush mount unit and uh, we sell these or we'll be selling them on our website so my hobby really doesn't revolve around 3D printing. You fans of the channel know that. I like something that's simple, and this printer definitely did that. I pulled it out of the box, and I had my first print printing in about 10 minutes. It went through the setup process, I downloaded the uh, slicer while it was doing that on my computer, and popped the uh, shelf bracket onto the slicer, and I had it printing. First uh, shelf bracket worked perfect, zero issues. Second one repeat, exactly the same, and it's been a great experience so far. So, so very easy to use, shipping was great, very, very fast, and so far it's been an awesome experience. Uh, so far with this printer, we've put almost a roll of filament or a kilogram of filament through it. It's worked beautifully, zero issues with the printer, and it was very easy to use. The, uh, the included slicer that is recommended works great. Uh, you've got a camera built in here as well too. I'm not gonna go over all the details of the printer, but if you wanna find out more about this printer, I'll throw some links down below in the video description, also in the first comment of the video. But if you're looking for a 3D printer or looking for a larger 3D printer, Definitely suggest checking this one out. It's got a larger print volume than most of the smaller ones uh, that are available. And that's why we have added it to the print farm here at the, uh, at the shop. Not like we have a huge print farm, but we've got quite a few printers now. And uh, it's been tons of fun learning about this stuff. So I encourage you guys to check it out. The Creality printer is working amazing. I'm excited to pull the Ender out and see how that thing works. It's the non-enclosed printer, a bit more basic, very affordable as well too. It'll be fun to test that one out as well. So thank you Creality for sponsoring this video. Thank you for sending us these printers to try out and uh, thumbs up from the lighter side of RC. This one is working amazing. Now one of the things that is uh, sequencing is important on this aircraft is when you bolt the front fuselage on, the bolts come from the back into the front portion. So all of these tanks, like the main tank, the uh, intake and all that stuff needs to be out when you bolt that front, uh, front part of the fuselage on. So 
We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves with that. Uh, we've got our bypass sitting in here, our lower bypass. Cut the, uh, the ears off the bypass to get, it, uh, to get it fit, and it looks like it's going to fit beautiful. So I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this bypass uh, lined up and, and fit in place. Then we're going to take this stuff out and probably bolt the front part of the fuselage on. All right, so we've got our bypass screwed in here. We've got two screws on the front former two on the back here. The back ones go into our blocks that we added in place for our engine rails. We still haven't put our, uh, our screw in place for the engine rails because the engine rails have to come back out. But we've got the bypass all fit and uh, everything worked out good with the bypass. We don't have a lot of clearance here when this engine goes in. Uh, it's very, very tight to the, to the uh, well, the, the formers and the bypass, but it's gonna protect Number one, it's going to protect the engine from sucking in stuff from the gear openings. But the other big thing that this does is it also protects all of the, the lines and components underneath. So this separation is very important on this aircraft. So last thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to mark out our, bar, our bypass. We need to do a little bit of uh, sanding in this area to allow the engine bolts and, and rails and everything to sit in place. It doesn't have to be much. We do have to have a little notch out there and uh, it's easier to sand out of the fuselage. So with the bypass fit, uh, probably the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull all this stuff out and I think we're gonna be joining the front fuselage in place. All right, so I figured we would just get the bypass uh, and intake duct all fit, which we've done. So I've just placed this in there, traced my line out, cut it out and we are bang on perfect. So now our lower bypass intake duct is 100% fit and that looks awesome. The paint marker we use just use rubbing alcohol and that pulls it off. So that is wonderful. Very, very happy to have that fit. And uh, I think it's time to pull these tanks out and get the fuselage front end bolted in place. Okay, so we've got our bypass out. We've got our front ducting out. We've got our fuel tanks out. It all comes out quite easy and we are ready to bolt this fuselage together. Our front tank or our primary tank still needs to be fastened in place but uh, bolting the fuselage together is the next thing we want to do. Now we spent a bunch of time thinking on this thing, uh, trying to figure out a more stronger way to join the front fuselage with the main fuselage. Now the stock system is awesome, works great. I just want to do it a little bit better. I have thought about putting pins in this area here. The problem is the fuel tanks come almost all the way forward. So there's really not a lot of room here for adding a pin that joins the two pieces of the fuselage. So I think what we're going to do here is we are going to add some additional fasteners to this V shape in the front here. So probably one, two, three, four. Um, that's probably going to be sufficient overall. We may put a couple more here uh, in this area as well too. We'll see how it works out, but uh, we are going to put some additional fasteners in this aircraft. All right, so we've got our nose bolted on and we're actually doing a live stream right now. So there's the uh, chat from the live stream. There's our camera from the live stream. And uh, what's the live stream? Well, it's the lighter side of RC After Dark, which is our live stream channel. We do live streams here from the shop every two weeks-ish for about two hours. And you guys get to see the behind the scenes stuff. So these guys watching on the live stream right now are actually seeing this about two weeks before you guys are seeing it in the video. So definitely encourage you to check it out. The lighter side of RC after dark, completely separate channel, but uh, that's where we do our live stream stuff. So one of the comments on the live stream was, it looks like a park flyer without the nose on. Well, it looks a heck of a lot better now, much less like a park flyer with that nose bolted on. Really starts to take size and shape once you get the entire fuselage put together and boy, that looks good. So when we put this together, we basically have three bolts on the nose, on the, on the V part of the nose, and we've got one, two, three, four, five fasteners in the actual butt joint. So you get all those done up with Loctite loosely, uh, so you can actually have a little bit of wiggle room to get everything installed. Once everything's in place, then you cinch it down with your Allen key. And just in case you're wondering why jets are fairly complicated, well, Here's all the stuff, the wires. That's not even all the wires, but that's all the wires and tubes and airlines that come from the back part of the plane, the main part of the plane, and all run forward. 
So we got to get our tanks prepped for installation. So the front tank needs to go in first. Uh, this line is going to be the line that goes to our UAT. Now in this aircraft, if you're just joining us in this journey, we are using a flight composite tech uh, UAT. That's the owner's choice in this one. So this is what's going in the aircraft. So pretty much needs to go right in this area, kind of here. Uh, I'm not saying that's how it's going to be organized, but that's how the UAT needs to go in there. So our main line right here that pulls from this front tank, this is the line that goes to the UAT. So when we're filling up this aircraft, UAT will fill, come through here, fill up this tank, splits off to these two lines, which go to our saddle tanks, which are behind the front tank. And then the vent lines will join up and come outside the fuselage. So we've installed that, we've tie wired or safety wired our fittings. So the front tank is ready to go in. All right, so one of the struggles with this F-16 is where things get placed. Uh, things are actually, because it's, uh, it's a large airframe, but just inherently with the design, things are very tight. So I'm just gonna talk through my kind of layout here. Um, I think what we're gonna be doing is installing our electronics and everything in the center section there. So when we look at the cockpit layout here, basically we've got the cockpit is going to, we've already kind of taken a look at this, is essentially kind of flush with the bottom of this, um, if we were to run a straight edge all the way across. Now the nose cone setup that comes with the aircraft, this is the stock setup, and it's pretty much designed for a power box setup. If you look at this area here, this is, drilled already for a power box royal and that sits right in that area which is out of the way of everything well we're not going to run our uh, stuff right up in the front there or at least i don't think we are and we're going to be using this area to mount all of our batteries there's the switch there's the screen and the way that we're setting this plane up is I don't wanna the, uh, the owner to have to take the nose cone on and off and on and off every time he wants to fly the aircraft. So we're using this plate here, which we've done and uh, designed in previous videos. And it goes right in this area right there behind the plate, obviously. But all of our regular flying stuff is gonna be done from the engine hatch. So when this plane's flying at the field, you pull the hatch off, uh, air fill, fuel fill, all that stuff is going to be from this equipment plate right there. The only reason to take the nose cone on and off is at the end of the flying day to take your batteries out. So that is how we're laying out this aircraft. And our equipment kind of makes the most sense to put on the bottom here. And uh, that becomes a little bit challenging because you can't really take up any additional space. So what that means is we essentially are going to be gluing in pieces of wood. So we will do up a piece of wood under the front and back parts of the central box, get that fastened to the wood, get the screws all sanded down, and that'll get glued in place there. So all of that stuff stays fairly simple, uh, but we want to utilize this area. Now our air pump, is gonna go in this front section. Our UAT is gonna go in this front section. Our canopy actuation is gonna be an air cylinder. Uh, it mounts to an arm that goes through that slot and it needs to be mounted in this area as well. So all of the equipment on this aircraft actually is quite a challenge to install. So really we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, with the installation of this area here because we still need access to all this area. So I couldn't put my ducks in right now until we've got all of our lines and everything run forward. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our main fuel tanks installed. Um, I have, but before we get our main fuel tanks installed, we need to have those tanks sitting in this area, put the lines on and then tuck the, uh, the fuel tanks in. So it's definitely a bit of a process we can get the bypass installed here, the lower portion, and get that kind of area all finished. We're gonna put some ceramic paint around this area 
and uh, probably on the lower portion of the bypass. So lots to do still. So this may seem a little bit out of order, but uh, the reason we have to fit the cockpit now is to make sure we allow for enough room to actually fit everything in this aircraft. So the cockpit itself, uh, they've put a notch here in the front. Now I've taken my Sharpie and I drew on the fuselage. Now the reason for that is I'm gonna put little notches right here so that cockpit can go just a little bit further. And the point of that is because the cockpit can slide side to side and that would block our little hooks here for our locks. So if we make little indents right there, it doesn't have to be much, that'll keep the nose of the cockpit in place. So second thing I did was make a tray. Now this tray is a specific depth just to go under the back of the cockpit. And what that tray does is that supports the back of the cockpit because there's nothing supporting the back of the cockpit. And then our seat here is removed completely separate. So the seat actually gets screwed in like this and screws into those guys right there. So the cockpit on this aircraft is, uh, so I guess you'd call it maybe semi-permanent. Um, so you don't wanna have to, to take that cockpit out on a regular basis. No problem with Jetty, like we've done on previous aircraft. We can run uh, connections between all the different devices to either the front here or the back, and uh, that allows us access to all the devices. So what that means for us though, is all of our equipment that gets mounted um, in the front area here all needs to go underneath this tray depth right there. I did put a right angle on the tray. You can kind of see it right there. Now what that does is that supports this tray against the former itself. So if we just use the screws, that's not going to be enough support. Did a little uh, triangle on there and that triangle actually holds the weight of the cockpit. So now with the, uh, the cockpit kind of laid out and we've got a good plan there, now I feel like we can continue with our equipment installation. So the first thing I've done is I hooked up our, one of our lines to our fuel tanks. Now this is the line coming out of the front tank vent that goes to this saddle. The other one goes to the other saddle and then our vents are gonna come together and go outside the fuselage. And I think we're gonna put our uh, vent line probably somewhere in this area right here and uh, that's going to allow a taxi tank to be plugged in nice and easy and the taxi tank can sit on top of the wing and it's going to be a nice hidden spot for it. All right so we've got our tanks installed we still need to bolt the front portion back in there's a, um, a bolt right here that uh, mounts um, onto a blind nut Anyways, um, working on the lower bypass section here. So planning on painting this with BVM heat shield and uh, I've sanded out the bypass um, in the area that we're going to install the heat shield, cleaned it up with rubbing alcohol, put my notches here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this installed and then we'll paint it when it's installed. So before we put this in, I'm gonna put those front screws for the tanks and then we will get this reinstalled. All right, so just working out some of our hidden equipment here, one of the three items is our uh, black box, or um, yeah, I guess better to call it the black box. But uh, this is everything that runs the Suiwin 400 turbine. And uh, this um, line here goes between the turbine and the black box. Basically, this distance that uh, this plug-in is, between that and the turbine is sort of a fixed item. So if we measure two hand widths, that's about as far forward as we can mount that box. Now it actually works out good because we have our wood V that joins the fuselage together. We can mount this guy on the wood V. Now the only thing is we have to put some wood blocks underneath and the reason for that is because one of the bolts that holds the fuselage together sits kind of right in the middle of the block of the box. So we're going to glue with high saw these two blocks onto the wood surface and that is going to sit in that area. All right, so we, uh, I didn't really show you guys this stuff but I got all the BVM ceramic paint installed. Did the former back here as well three coats everywhere and we also did the top hatch so the back section that uh, hangs above the rear portion of the turbine 
and that is done. Now, I took the time to make that shelf for the cockpit right here and just noticed that uh, this actually snapped. It wasn't designed like this. So I thought this was designed in two pieces was, the, was my first thought. But when I looked closely, uh, I realized that uh, the cockpit just snapped off. So um, that's the downside with the Skymaster cockpits is they're quite delicate. So I'm probably gonna get rid of that back support right here. Um, I may keep it though, because it's not a bad thing. It uh, helps get rid of the, uh, all the pressure being on these two bolts or fastening points right there. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this all glued back in place as one piece. So I'm just gonna use some uh, CA and get that tacked in place. And then we will uh, probably put some fiberglass and high sol on the back side just to uh, get that solidified. Uh, the shelf's probably not a terrible idea because it's gonna make sure that that stays uh, nice and supported. These two screws back here will just prevent the cockpit from moving side to side. So we're gonna get that done. That was a bit of a, a hindsight on my part, but uh, no problem, let's get it fixed. All right, so I put the back on there, temporary glued it with, uh, with CA, and that's gonna be an absolute nightmare. Getting this cockpit in and out without actually removing some of the dash panels and stuff, which are screwed in from the underside, is gonna be a nightmare. So we're going back to our original plan, which actually is gonna work really well. Uh, we're going to have the cockpit set in there. We're gonna use a single screw into our support plate right there. That's gonna hold this uh, cockpit in place. And then our, uh, our pilot dude can be attached to the back seat here and we can just tuck him in. The, uh, the seat stays centered side to side, and then our true screws hold everything in place. So that's gonna be an easier solution to get that cockpit in and out, and uh, we'll just go with the original plan. So the other night we glued our, uh, our pieces in here, number one for our central box, number two for our Cortex, so those are done. Um, our uh, black box for the turbine, which is located underneath there, is glued in place, which is awesome. So I think the next thing we can do back here is start thinking about getting our turbine set in place. Uh, we do have to get uh, the rest of our stuff here. I'm not sure if we can get the, I think we can get the ducting in with the turbine in place, so I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Maybe we need to get our, uh, our smoke tanks uh, plumbed first. I'm a little bit scattered right now as far as what we're doing, but um, progressing. All right, so engine just drops in place. That all worked out good. Um, our little cutouts for the, uh, the engine tabs worked perfect. Uh, next thing I did was I took a piece of, uh, I think this is, I don't think it's carbon, but anyways, it's black phenolic tube. So it's like a wing receiving tube and installed that over our two wire leads here or runs from the back. That's just gonna provide one extra layer of protection uh, just in case. And uh, I had them, it's a good fit. It's a perfect fit for right there, so we'll use them. Uh, put our ducting in place and I've gotta do a little bit of sanding here because the duct isn't quite sitting in this groove. So we just have to sand a little bit of the corners off here to make that duct sit down properly. And then I think we're going to utilize the space in this area for all of our lighting systems. So our afterburner controller, our lighting controller, um, our SBEC can all go on top of the tank or beside the tank here. So I'm gonna to start to organize the wiring on that stuff. And basically we've got uh, kind of the setup here. So our SBEC is gonna be powering our uh, afterburner light controller and also our lighting controller. Now we are adding a SPO6 switch to our lighting control system. So what the SPO6 switch is, it's a generic thing. It's not jetty specific. Um, this works with any radio system. Essentially you have your power coming in on this side. Uh, this plugs into your receiver and the SPO6 is switched um, electronically. So the, the O6, uh, this is the optical version. Um, anyways, so this is gonna turn the SkyMaster lighting controller on and off. Now the SkyMaster controller is parasitic, so if we just plug a battery in here, it turns on. Uh, it doesn't wait for a signal to turn on and off, and that's where the SPO6 switch comes into play. Now the SBEC also is parasitic, but it's just a single LED that lights up here, so very, very minimal. And uh, our Unilight controller is not parasitic, so when it doesn't have a signal coming in on the uh, signal port, it no longer pulls power. So uh, in this circuit, the only thing that's going to be pulling power is going to be the SBEC. So we've got to get all of this stuff 
tucked in that center tank section. So this is what we have to organize next. All right, so we've got our wiring done up here. These two are gonna be mounted in the back by the main fuel tank. So we've got one lead going to our SP06. That lead's coming forward. This is gonna be mounted in the front of the aircraft, so it's got the programmability. Uh, you need to be able to access this to program the channels. So that's gonna be in the front by the receiver, and uh, that's why there's the long power wire run to it. So, and then we've got our lead going forward to operate our SP06 switch. So this is gonna be powered from the battery, and then also, essentially, the battery lead's gonna come back here. We're gonna have one lead going to the SPEC, one lead going to the Suiwin smoke pump, and another lead going to the onboard compressor. So that is the one battery that's kind of powering all the auxiliary items on the aircraft. Uh, also got our vent fitting installed right there, nice and hidden and out of the way. And we will plug in our vent line from our main tanks into that. And then one of the other things that I've been thinking about doing and uh, just finally did it was our scale uh, split for our intakes here. So um, I'm gonna high saw this in at the end of the evening so it can sit. But uh, this is made with a piece of carbon and uh, we basically just got it shaped and sized to the right dimensions and that will go in there and look beautiful and scale. And the top side of it is right down in the center of the V, so it's just a little bit lower than our wood piece. All right, so there's a shot of the F-16 all together, front, back, fuselage, joined, tail pieces on. This organizing is definitely taking a lot of time. The big struggle is finding out where to put everything because we do have lots of room, but that room disappears pretty quick and it's pretty tight access in the center section. So next video, we're just gonna keep plugging away with, uh, with organizing and getting stuff installed. Thank you guys for watching. Just a little plug here for our podcast channel. So the RC Air Experience is our podcast channel. Me and my friend Anthony do it together and we've got some great podcasts coming up. If you guys are podcast fans, if you need something to play in the background while you're in your shop, encourage you to check it out. Uh, the RC Air Experience, completely separate channel. There's some links down below to that channel and it's tons of fun. We've had some great guests so far from the industry and some great conversations. So thanks guys for watching. That's it. We'll see you in the next video.